Welcome to Night Light. Step away from the mainstream and gather around as we enlighten the world and our realities and travel this cosmic journey we call life. Join us as we share with you and provide that beacon that can guide us all to a better way. Explore with us as we examine a metaphysical montage of spiritual insights covering everything from the mundane to the magical, UFOs to unicorns, and everything in between. This is a time of awakening, of sharing and evolving of spreading our wings and soaring on the cosmic breath of creation. Come and join with other light-minded spirits as we weave our lights together to seek understanding, enlightenment, and with a little luck, some wisdom. This is Nightlight. A reminder that you are never alone. Welcome everybody to Nightlight. Thanks for joining in and sharing with us. It's always great to have a large audience out there. We really appreciate your spending your time with us and joining us on Monday and Tuesday nights and sometimes Wednesday nights, like this week when Mary Joyce will be here on Wednesday. I want to thank Ken Quiethawk for his amazing intro, as, as always. There's nothing like his voice. He and his wife have an, a remarkable um, website out there. You can find them on the Internet. They're Native Storytellers and... They have preserved an ancient tradition with dignity and beauty, and it is very profound. I urge everybody to check it out because it's a great way of, of remembering our cosmology and, and what, what makes us what, we, what and who we are. I have a great guest tonight. Solaris Blue Raven is, <clears throat> is with me, and she is an amazing lady. She is a published author, a clairvoyant, a remote viewer, a public speaker and MT healer with a professional background in covert projects and metaphysical sciences. She's the author of Goddess Ascending, a monthly newsletter pertaining to ascension and planetary shifts and changes. She's a practitioner of the craft, a professional writer with several books on covert technology and psychotronic warfare. She, and you can find her books on Amazon.com or Author Books. I also want to mention that I'm not going to mention all of her books because there are too many of them, actually, but she has written what I feel is probably the, the best book ever on ascension, and it's called Trans, uh, Transmutation through, through Ascension. And it is one of the finest books ever. I, I recommend it to everybody. I also actually use it in workshops because I think it is one of the most spectacular books ever put out there. Um, and if you're going to go looking at her books, please, please, please make sure you check out Mr. Sun and the Halloween Ball. It is, it is also another profound book that, um, that I highly recommend and that is so exciting because uh, it, she shows a whole other side of her, and it's a magical side. And uh, it is beautifully done. The illustrations are phenomenal, and the story is is amazing, and it's very appropriate for children and adults as, as well. Uh, the book we're going to be talking about tonight is Alien Intelligence, Stepping Up to the Galactic Neighborhood, Alien Blood, Psy Spies, and Psychological Wars. It's, it's an amazing book, um, and it pertains to the cosmic galactic ancestry of this blue world. She discusses the cosmos and what the alien intelligence is, exotic technologies used in covert sci-fi and surveillance projects, de-assessments and covert military abductions in connection with artificial intelligence. 
She takes your mind into the vast cosmic oceans to explore consciousness and how the alien intelligence in connection with the worlds of artificial intelligence created a cosmic footprint in multidimensional space. She touches on the ufology field and how to assess the real case experiencer versus imposter cases and takes you into the world of covert psychological warfare and explain how these projects work in areas of the ufology field. She is a profoundly interesting lady, um, <clears throat> and she is just amazing in her expertise and, and the way that she explains uh, all of the areas that she gets into and touches into. I think that you will find um, her insightful, educational, enlightening, and entertaining. And I really, I, I think that this field is an important one for us to go into because with everything that's going on today, we're looking at what is the spiritual reason and, and purpose for, for everything that we go through on a day-to-day -day basis, most especially when we have uh, tremendous crises going on as we do today with with uh, the pandemic that's out there and it it feels as if, if we need to at this point in time re-explore where we're coming from where we're going to hi there welcome to the show thank you <laughs> sorry i got stuck <laughs> in another orbit yes hi <laughs> can you hear me all right i can hear you i actually i've plugged i've plugged my favorite book with this transmutation through um ascension and told everybody how i've stolen parts of it and um uh -huh. and also plugged my other favorite book that you have done i mean all of your books are really are really good books they're great reads uh, but my favorite one that that actually does not get as much attention as the others and it should is mr sun and the halloween ball oh uh, yes one of my favorites which, too it it the the illustrations are phenomenal and the story is great and and it's a great way to um have people have children you know come into contact sort of in a, in a good way to to different aspects of our reality that they they don't normally come in contact with and i think it's it's, right. it's a charming charming book well thank you i think that the children appreciate it as well even adults i know a lot of adults that really so sort of like the storyline, plus it tunes them into the mystical world and paganism and the craft and gives it more of a positive theme, which is good. It, it absolutely does. It's it's just, I mean, when you when you come from your background and you you write these heavy duty books that you've written, and then to come out with Mr. Sun and the Halloween Ball, I mean, oh my goodness, it it just shows. That was my downtime. I had to take a break. <laughs> so, I had to take a break from all the craziness, from all the intensity. So that was a good break for me. Well, you know, I think that, that, the, that this book that we're going to talk about tonight, first of all, is, is amazing. And Patrick and I always used to say to each other, um, you know, we are who we've been waiting for. And that's basically what, what you have said, you know, we are the aliens. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I think it's important that people understand when, we talk, when you talk, especially in your book, about um, – alien blood and aliens, you know, you know I, maybe it's a good idea that, that you explain what you mean by this because, it, it, you know, we're not looking for, well, we aren't indigenous to this planet. So I think that's Correct. where we, we, you know, where we have to start explaining things to people because, that, mm -hmm. that's, I mean, this book is what I have been talking about. And you write the same way you talk, which I think is fascinating. And, you know, every now and then I was out of breath by reading a page. So uh, uh -huh. <laughs> let's, let's explain what you mean by alien intelligence here. Sure. Well, alien intelligence, as you all know, is it's part of our galactic her heritage, our cosmic ancestry. It connects to who we really are before we showed up here on the timeline. In other words, our essence of origin, we come from the stars, that's our origin in a different space-time configuration. We enter onto a timeline here or we incarnate here uh, through whether it's a, a soul incarnation or a walk-in experience. The bottom line is that our true origins come from the cosmos and the stars, and that's what gives us our correlation and our calibration to higher consciousness, our multidimensional design, our spiritual gifts, our attunement to other multidimensional beings. So all of this correlates to what we're doing here on the timeline, and, and people do. They've forgotten that 
big template that's part of the cosmic design that's part of their beyond DNA, but it's part of their cosmic ancestry and heritage. And I, I wanted to touch in on that because I see so many people looking into the UFOs and looking up into the stars and wanting to connect with uh, whatever, you know, ships out there. And I'm thinking, you are the ship, you have the connection, you are the celestial species, you are the, the being you're looking for, it's that same concept and, and, and understanding what, what we are and looking right into the cells and atoms of who we are on a consciousness level. And, and obviously those of us who have done spiritual work, we, it's easier for us to do these things, but for people out there who have never been studying any of this stuff, it's a little bit more difficult, and especially in this day and age where everybody is driving through the, right now they're in a fear program. And it, it's good to kind of, you know, shift gears and go into that cosmic ancestry because that's what, that's what's going to get us home. Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, what, what I think, at least in my, in my belief system, when we do pass from this, <clears throat> when we pass from, excuse me, this, this, solid body we we don't go home to a source we go on to another um another lifetime actually mm-hmm. yep continuing the stream of consciousness and and depending on where we've been or where we're heading and so far as where we want to go through our manifestation and beliefs is usually where we're going to wind up uh, i will say one thing that i think that this uh this journey here on this world for a lot of us is over so far as those of us who have really mastered a lot of different levels of our own divinity through multidimensional fields. And we've, we brought a lot of data here to this world and it's time to uh, go to another, another space time configuration in my opinion. So it's going to be a whole different ball game when people do leave and transit out of here in my opinion. Well, there a whole bunches of them are for sure. I know that, mm-hmm. <clears throat> that, that so many people um, don't see beyond this physical reality. And I, I, I'm, no. hopeful, I'm hopeful that your books will help people to understand that this physical reality is, is you know, a blink in time. And, and, it truly and is. The spirit that they, you know, the spirit that they carry within has been through probably millions of these blinks. And, so true. And it's important. So true. And, I, and you, you got into another area here that I was, I was really fascinated with, um, my belief system is, is has always been, <clears throat> until I change it, of course, that that um, our brains, our 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 spirit, the spirit within is so powerful that if we won't accept information from our own consciousness, it creates a hologram that tells us the information, and that that we believe we've we've spoken to an angel or a spirit or something else, but it's really our own higher consciousness connecting with us and trying to give us information. And mm-hmm. so many people don't agree with me. <laughs> um, it just makes more sense to me. It really does. I mean, right. we can create. Well, you're manifesting a, a, a reality. It, it makes perfect sense because we are a multidimensional and holographic, and, and it would make sense that you'd be able to access that. I think once you get beyond that perimeter, there's also the co-creation aspect of, you know, you go to a certain frequency band, then you're, then you're co-creating with source, and you're, you're part of that wave of consciousness where it's not about you and a mirror of yourself through a multidimensional field. It's more about uh, the essence of creation with you, riding that wave with you and creating with you simultaneously. At least that's what my experience has been. Well, not only that, but our, our spirit is, you know, most people think of, you know, when they pass, they, they have the same form and shape that they had in this lifetime. They don't understand when I say, no, your spirit has no form. Mm-hmm. So That's right. You know, it, 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 <clears throat> well, yeah, but, but but you know, it doesn't it doesn't have a mouth and a nose and a, and you know eyes and ears. It 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 just it's a conscious knowingness that knows it's on a journey and knows it where it has to go and stuff like that. But so so you basically have um, given people uh, an amazing grid work for understanding um, just what it is we're dealing with and and I love the fact that you called this planet a, a blue planet and that it was terraformed. So who terraformed it? We I look at it as uh, more of the ancient civilizations, ancient species, but I look at them more as the light beings, as the architects of life that co-created uh-huh. and designed this particular um frequency and so far as the construct itself. That's what I see anyway. I know it's been overlaid uh, a lot of different levels on a lot of different levels for many um timelines with other kinds of life forms and species, but the, initi- the initiators of this uh, design work were more what I described and what I have a connection to. That's what I see anyways. But I say it's terraforming, it's constantly morphing, because it is, it's constantly morphing and changing if we are, 
And it certainly isn't uh-huh. something we're meant to stay on permanently. And, and that's the thing, you know, when people talk about Gaia, Gaia, Gaia is a frequency. It's a transmission and signal. It's just like anything else. It's a frequency band of energetics, just like the Christ consciousness. But it's not what people think it is, and at least not in my, my interpolation. So that's you know, what I've been seeing. Well, no, <clears throat> I would agree with you. And, and it does feel as though you are, you are looking at, at life in a very different way than most people look, look at it. And yet it, it feels as though it has a greater sense of truth to it than what a lot of people consider. And I'm not saying that their truth isn't their truth, because it is. It's just that I relate more to what you're saying <clears throat> other than what other people are saying. And it just it feels to me as though what you're what you've got here, what I love you've you've seeded the consciousness of humanity. Anybody who reads your book, even if they don't agree with it, the seeds have been planted. And Correct. you know, uh it it it, it it's it, it will eventually grow if it's appropriate for them at this particular point in time. Mm-hmm. But how, I agree. how, how, you're how is too. Go ahead. Well, I I hope. <laughs> Somebody asked me once, how did how do you tell how evolved you are? And and I I said, you know, I I always assume that the dandelions are more evolved than I am, and that way I don't get into trouble. And she said, no, I'm serious. How do you tell what level you're on? And I said, well, I can tell you exactly how, but you may not want to do it. And they they said, how? And I said, well, at the moment of death, picture yourself getting in an elevator and look at the top right away and you'll see what floor you're on and just hope you're not in the basement. (laughs) That's great. I love it. So, but there's not a level so much as it is a... uh, there's not a level of this. It, it's more of a how much you want to embrace and open up to. It's right. it's not that you yeah. have to earn it. You have you have to open it and and embrace it, and and mm-hmm. and it, you know, in it make it a part of yourself. I mean, it's nothing you have to. You can't take a class for this. I, I a term that I've been using lately that I just love. It's it's you know. Um, you have to learn it, but I can't teach it to you. Oh, I love that. Yes. So that, so that it, this is something you, you have to, some lifetime, you have to get to a point where you embrace this, and it doesn't have to be this lifetime. You know? And I can't teach it to you, but I can tell you that you're going to have to learn it at some point in time. Um, <clears throat> you, do, you, you do talk about alien blood. What do you mean about alien blood? What, what does that mean to you? Well, the alien blood, what I see is it's more than the DNA, but it's it's our celestial, once again, our cosmic heritage, but the frequency we have in our blood is our vibration, which is activated through the DNA on a lot of different levels, but also correlates to our cosmic ancestry, once again. So when I say we have alien blood, we, our blood's origins is not from this world. It comes from the cosmos, once again. So that's that's the way I, I see it uh, when I'm looking at the construct of what we are as, as a bloodline. Then we have our cosmic ancestry connected into our lineage here or incarnations here, who've done the spiritual work or whatever else we're connected to through initiation and mystery schools. Then you have your family's uh, genetic code, which is connected to whatever, um, whatever country or whatever heritage you have. And that correlates to some degree with some psychic imprinting. But what it really boils down to is the ancestors that were here, your ancestors, my ancestors, everyone else's, uh, they, they all had visitors with them. They all had their own multidimensional extraterrestrial experiences awakening themselves, you know, ascending into multidimensional fields of energy. So that's really the cosmic bloodline that we're talking about that's always been with us through um, lifetimes on and off planet that is here with us now. And so every aspect of who we are here in our own blood, our cells, our atoms, is connected to that beautiful force and that database of information. So that's what I was uh, communicating when I was writing about that. It's sort of like <clears throat> the body we're in is, you know, we're really an avatar, um, mm-hmm. our, our spirit for this lifetime rides in this body. And the avatar comes equipped with lots of toys and w- lots, of, lots of bells and whistles. And mm-hmm. it's our choice as to whether we utilize these bells and whistles or we don't. Um, Correct. Be, so, so, that, so that, you know, at, at some point in time, you know, you, if you are on a spiritual journey, then you are... Then, then you are getting into you know meditation and and astral travel and all of the other, all of the fun stuff and and one of the things that 
that you talked about was was the um, the suit that you wore that, that enabled you to go dimension to dimension, or um, <clears throat> and in, in my thought pattern, um, it, if if you go to other dimensions, you're basically basically doing it in astral body, not physical body. So were you talking yeah, about you going to dimension? No, were you talking about the physical body actually visiting other dimensions, or were you talking the astral body? Right. Well, there's both. There is the astral projection. There's bilocation. There's there's a, an aspect to us that can literally do obviously that. But the idea behind taking our bodies with us and, and taking it to a calibration level, yes, we can actually mutate the body, the bioelectric field, the molecular structure to such a degree when it's in harmonization with another dimensional field that, that calibrates with it, that we can actually phase into another multidimensional world with our bodies. And that's part of that process of more than ascension in light body and Merkaba. And that's to me, is one of the missing components of what's happening here because we have these abilities. We have a technological suit when fully activated can do phenomenal work, we're, you know, more so than regular astronauts that we see here in NASA. But at the same time, we're not allowed to do that to some degree because of the perimeters that have been set here, the belief systems, the entrainment programming, and a lot of it now, especially, is the, uh, the determination of having frequency fence bands and interference patterns are being run to change the molecular field as we're vibrating into another dimensional um, you know, orbit, so to speak. So I've seen a lot of that going on, but we certainly have the capabilities. That's the beauty of what we are as bioelectric beings. And when you start looking at the body itself, it's really a fascinating design and very technical. Well, in a way, though, has a... Um, <clears throat> I'm not mechanically oriented. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm prefacing this with this, but, but a lot of the, the high-tech cars have regulators put on them so they can only go so fast, right? Mm-hmm. Um, has, have there been regulators put upon us on a spiritual level for a lifetime? That's a really good question, in my opinion. I don't think we have any speed limit, personally, but I do feel like we have... Uh, I don't know what you would call them, gatekeepers, so to speak, but not off extraterrestrial gatekeepers. They're more about what's going on with national security here and keeping people contained to such a degree that they're not able to ascend out of where they need to go in order to really experience who they are as multidimensional avatars. And I, I think that's what I've always been ahead of the game board. You know, when I write, it's really about writing in the future, but I'm bringing it here. And, and the future is eclipsing ours right now, but yet we're in a war. You know, right now you're looking at the world and it seems very backwards. It seems like we're going in, inverted, but at the same time through that inversion, above us, beyond eclipsing, beyond all this is that is that multiverse I'm talking about. So I hope that answered your question. Sometimes I go on a different tangent. Yeah, well, see, what, what, I, what I keep feeling is that, um, <clears throat> now I don't know who it is, but I do know that, that fear is being spread all over the world that, that, mm-hmm. that, that so paralyzes people that they aren't reaching into the spiritual aspects of their own lives at this moment in time, especially... And and is is there I, I don't know what to call it a group is there a a power is there a, an authority of some sort that is that is holding people down and back intentionally? Right. Well, I, I would I would kind of classify those as would be the, like the deep state almost. Uh, you know, insofar as the global controllers, people who are literally uh-huh. in the illusion of power and control but don't really have it, but they have taken so much technology over the centuries and decades and stolen so much information that they've weaponized everything, and now they're using psychological operations to control manipulate the mass collective. So, yeah, I see that going on right now, and, I, and that will definitely put a stopping – it will stop people as far as their evolution their progressions on the timeline. They're not going to want to keep evolving. They're, they're in a stasis of control. And, but these people are not immortals, and they're not multidimensional, and they're not celestials. They're not, they're not from a different uh, – or the full light space time configuration, so they don't have any authority. And I, and I think I alluded to that in my book, Alien Intelligence, that, you know, these people are on their way out. But in my opinion, I think they're trying to take everybody down with them in the process, and that means keeping people in fear, in a stasis of control, so they're not able to access their multidimensional avatar designs and their spiritual states of higher consciousness because of the mechanisms that have been set in place. But we are trying to take those down, as you probably know. I mean, there's fragmentation going on right now. But through the fragmentation, people are in a chaotic space. They need, they need to be centered. And being like you, you're, you're very advanced. I've always said you're a teacher's teacher. So even through crisis, you, you maintain that pillar of your own light, and so do I and other beings like us, but it's hard for a lot of other people. They fragment, they fall down, they look for someone to help them up, and, and hopefully their, their guardians and their, their beings, they work with a little system with that. Well, I, I think from what I'm seeing and what I'm feeling, I think we are transitioning into a time when people are 
waking up and and yep. realizing that 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 they have control over their own realities and and that Correct. you know they create they create their reality by their perception of it and if you feel that you are trapped then you are trapped you've created a prison right um yep very good i you know i have yep. chosen to I have chosen to sit in my house for the last month or so, and may another month for, for as far as that goes. But it's sort of like this is my sanctuary, and mm-hmm. I'm safe here, and I'm protected here, and you know it's okay that that you know I'm not seeing or touching other people. It's a wonderful time to get in touch with all sorts of stuff, and and, and you know, and to bring it down mm-hmm. to the mundane. To clean things that should right. be cleaned. <laughs> oh, well, it's just, it's just kind of shake stuff. down your house. There's no doubt. <laughs> you know, do the boogie blasting, do the spiritual work, and, and charge your house. I always tell people, you know, clear out the, the whatever is in there that doesn't belong and purify. Yeah, absolutely. It's also a good time to shadow the so, self. You know, we just had a conversation the other day on my other show. Yeah, shadowing the self is a really good thing. Processing who you are. Yeah, absolutely. Uh-huh. Good time to do that. And what what I find is that that it's it's. I'm talking to myself a lot, but it's really cool because I'm answering my own questions. So it's not that I have flipped out. It's just that since I have no one else to talk to, except for if I pick up the phone, of course, but but it's kind of like, okay, so what is it I want to do? How do I want to get there? What is it that is a destiny pathway as opposed to what I think I should be doing? Because I have found that when I think I know where I should go and what I should do, that I'm always off track but if i feel it i know i'm i'm fine i'm in tune with what what the mm-hmm. process is and yep. and if i say if i say i think then i'm in trouble and i should just you know sit down and read a good book yeah. or something yeah overanalyze it, i tend to overanalyze oh, too sometimes yeah. but I, I get out of the way when i need to i get my personality out of the way yeah it, it's kind of uh, the ego you know, go to, go go watch a movie. You'll be safe in the movie theater, and I have work I have to do. Um, but but you know, for most people, this is this is a time of of, of panic and hoarding and 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 not being their mm-hmm. true selves because you know everything will work out. Everything will be okay. And what is what is what I'm finding is that I'm seeing that that. People, this, this, this has done something that, that, that nothing else has done in a long time. It has forced people to do research and find out where the truth truly lay. Yeah, and, that's true. And, yeah. And, if they're smart yeah, enough, I definitely. Think that, yeah, I, I, just, I, I just feel that, that the more I research, the more I realize that, that what, what we're being told is a part of the truth, but not the whole truth. Mm-hmm. And Yeah. And it, it's important to just keep asking those questions and not be fearful because you're still here. But but it's mm-hmm. it's just to me it's it's so exciting to see the changes that are coming up. And your book comes at such a great time, and it's not a long book. It's not a four or five hundred page novel. No, or anything I can't like do that. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but you do write like you talk. Um, yeah. It, it's um, it's it's beautifully written. It really is. And well, thank you. That's an honor to hear that from you. Thank you. I'm glad you read it. Thank you. Oh yeah. How could I not? Be- because I'm going to use the material someplace <laughs> else. <laughs> no, you always have such truth in what you in in what you've written, and and um, you you talk about. Uh, creating a cosmic footprint in in multidimensional space. Want to explain a little about what that is? Well, yeah, we enter onto this world. We incarnate here. We have life experiences. We do all the kinds of things we do, whether it's through spirit or through uh, having a wonderful family or doing something where we're teaching other people. Whatever we've done here on the timeline, we leave our our cosmic uh, footprint and blueprint here, but also in multidimensional fields. In other words, it keeps transcending and, and alchemically changing through each dimensional field of energy. So even though we've experienced something here, we've done some work here, that has already mutated and changed on an alchemical level and moving on to other dimensional fields, which changes the whole paradigm for us. It's actually moving in and changing our whole multiverse in such a different way because we are doing the work on multi-layers. And, and so that was my point is that nothing is a wasted amount of time. We might feel like sometimes we've wasted our moments here, but we haven't. We've alchemically changed an awful lot while we've been here, and, and we're still here in essence, and that signature still 
still reside and permeate the multidimensional fields. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> it, it's hard for some people to kind of grasp the multidimensional aspect of it. And um, right. you ta- you talked also about portals, which I I found fascinating because I, I know there are a number of them around the world, and um, and they're open, but they're open. Mm-hmm. What I find fascinating is they are open for those, you know, that for eyes to hear and uh, for eyes to see and ears to hear. They're open and have, have never been closed as far as I can tell, but, but they're open only to those who understand how to use them. Correct. So, yeah, they have to dial in so you, correctly. Yeah. Go ahead. So, so you, you, can't, you can't, you know, trip into one by accident. <laughs> Or maybe you can. I don't well, know. not really. But, but if you're vibrating at the same frequency or close to, then you would be able to access one without intent. In other words, if there's one close by and you're vibrating at the higher levels, or sometimes it's that osmosis effect where you're actually in tune to that frequency from a distance, and then all of a sudden, as you ap- approach that particular portal, you'll find more of a download coming in because you're connected in frequency and a resonance effect. So that does happen as well. Yeah. <clears throat> but but what I what I'm finding is that um, in many ways they're magnets. And, and I'm wondering if the Anastasi were pulled through a porthole at some point in time. I actually believe that, too. I think we've had a discussion about that before where we said what happened to these beings. You know, to me it seems like they face shifted. I called it face shifting, but still it would be through yeah. a portal or an access point of some kind. So, yeah, absolutely. Once again, the body was calibrated, the bioelectric field was calibrated to another fault. A multidimensional field of energy, which which opened up that frequency, so they were able to phase into that other other world. So yeah, that makes perfect sense to me. I think that happens more more often than people realize. Well, I, I would totally agree with you on that one. And you know, I think the other thing that that came through with your book was you know the the element of spaceships is 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 not as much a reality. It's 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 people independently being able to either go through portals or um, wormholes or, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's a matter of consciousness. And so our vehicle would be our body, not a metal ship. And it would be almost Correct. instantaneous as opposed to 12 years in stasis, you know. I, I just exactly. Can't, um, it just doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> the, the right. Well, see, it's all backwards. It's almost like, yeah, the instruction here is like almost inverted. It's it's not even correct. And, oh, I know you're advanced, and, and you get what I'm saying because it really is consciousness in motion and frequency-based. And we oversee, we see this wave of consciousness overseeing this world, but everything's already out there. It's already set in motion. So there's no time in the illusion of, there's no distance. It's all there simultaneously if we, we choose to ascend into it. Well, you know, we're all living in a state of war. I mean, yes, with the virus now, but but mm-hmm. also with major religions, with big pharma, with oh, yeah. you know, I mean, this this planet is constantly in a state of war of of huge right. corporations trying to keep the public under control so that they don't realize mm-hmm. they don't need them. And, right. Well, and, that's that entity you know, control. That, yeah, no, it just it, it's sort of like I, I've often said, sometimes it feels like humanity are pieces on a game board and we don't know what the game is. Right. And, well, I think I know what their game and, is. Theirs is exactly what you've been saying, mass control. And, and, and some, to some degree, there's a herd, you know, calling of the herd, <clears throat> excuse me, in my opinion. But at the same time, this is, this is a world that has been, once again, terraformed many times over. The people here that are playing that game are literally, they are. They're, they're players on a board game, but we're not players. You know, we, we didn't enter onto this timeline to be players. They are. So once again, we have two different kinds of energetic signatures walking this world simultaneously. Ours is immortal. It's multiversal. So we can, we can go into these other multidimensional fields and also affect the reality here. And if you notice, the more we change the reality here or their construct, the more they fight back, the more they want to hold on and hold on and hold on and pull everybody down with them with this gravity. Well, of course, that's changing. This is, they, have to, they have to come to terms with that they can't do this anymore. And this is the bigger picture of the multiverse telling them that they, they're not going to be able to do this ever again. And I want to make that clear to everybody. This is the last ride and the last hurrah for this agenda and the things that have been going on here for a very long time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, and what, 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 what's amazing is so many people think some people are in control, and, and they're really not their puppets. It's the puppet masters that we have to get to. 
and mm-hmm. you know, they aren't really seen that often. They aren't really, you know, pointed out, and and so so they let people think they're in control, and they let them loose. And, and in reality, so long as they do the work that that you know they've been programmed to, and they've been programmed. I think that was the, one of the other things I found fascinating how how everybody actually has been pre-programmed to a great degree, and and it's up to us to to break those programs and become more in control of our own selves again. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. A lot of social engineering is behind that. And, and of course, you find out who's being more programmed than others in a crisis. You know, in other words, a lot of people are just complying. They're in kind of a space of, of trance and also kind of a, a chaotic trauma. So they're really not understanding what's happening, so they're on autopilot. And that autopilot is usually a social engineer, socially engineered program. So you're seeing a lot of that going on with the Mass Collective right now and how they're just kind of going with a wave of what's happening here. And those of us who've been through projects like with me, with covert warfare and technologies, I'm like, I'm looking inside and out and I see everything because of where I've been. So I have a whole different picture than what everybody else is looking at. But, you know, I, I think you're right. It's all a byproduct of social engineering and that people have to question everything and also take control of their mo- emotional body, mental body, spiritual body and uh-huh. consciousness and, and also stand up and, and, and move the energy accordingly and don't let them shut it down or switch it off through any, any potential crisis or situation on the timeline. Oh, gosh, yeah. Because, well, you know, the, the uh, sign that was over the uh, Oracle of Delphi is to know, know thyself. And I think that's mm-hmm. really important that, that we do know ourselves, that we do know and, and, and start to look into really who we are. And, and that, that old phrase, and I don't know who said it, but, you know, we're not humans on a spiritual journey. We're spirits on a human journey. And, mm-hmm. and understand yeah. that because, because this human body is not who we are. It's what our, what no. our spirit rides at this moment in time, but this is not me. This is Right, and you if you know, notice, if I don't want to interrupt you, but I do want to make a point, that right now it's really about mastering, you know, they had the Jade Helm a couple of years back, if you remember, that was about mastering the human domain, which is not human oh, yeah. at all. It's literally about using AI to master the domain through surveilling and a lot of other things. Well, now they're pushing it a step further with this bioweapon and a lot of other things, in my opinion, and also connecting to mastering the domain once again through control mechanisms, social engineering, um, keeping people in, in, a, in a pattern of control through this chaotic moment. And, and you're noticing more and more the invasion and intrusion connected to wanting to dominate the DNA of each and every person here, which I think is very significant because the vaccines that they're trying to push, in my opinion, are more than vaccines. And we have to look at these oh, things. Yeah. We have to look and see what they're looking for um, at, the, at the DNA level, at the consciousness level, and, and who we are as, once again, cosmic beings and extraterrestrial alien intelligence on the timeline. It really boils down to that. Regardless of what we're seeing here, you, you said it before, there's one story being played out on the timeline through what people are being shown, and then the multiverse and other layers are happening here where there's, there's other things happening behind the scenes. It's bigger than that. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I, I kind of I, I step back every now and then, and I look around me, and it's like this is if, – if, if so many people weren't dying, it would be, it would be almost funny um, at how oh, no. people are reacting to this stuff. Um, is it, is it uncomfortable? Sure. Is it annoying? Absolutely. Is it is it life threatening? No, it's not. I mean, yes, there is oh, a yeah. virus out there, <laughs> yeah. but but yeah, it's weaponized. But um, I'll tell you, most of that. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I didn't want to interrupt you. Sorry, but I, I was that, just going to say, right. but some some of the things that are going on with these particular, and I don't know how much you've been looking into it, but, but a lot of this is negligence. And so far as the deaths ca- and the casualties with this quote unquote weaponized virus, some of it's incompetence in the medical industry and, and actually putting people on ventilators when they shouldn't have been on ventilators and such. So you have to look at that component as well. Some of these people are just not being treated properly with the type of, uh, type of medicine they would normally need for a situation that could help them. You know, so that's what I've been looking at and I've been diving into it, not in conspiracy level, but actually the people who are medical practitioners and some of the things I've had access to. So yeah, I think that we're looking at some strange going on with people. Once again, it's like Star Trek. You come from the stars and you enter onto a world, and they're using primordial medicines to, um, to fix something that could be fixed quite simply if people would pay attention. Well, that's true. <clears throat> and if scientists were, were let, left to do what they're supposed to do instead of what the, a government tells them to do too. I mean, that's mm-hmm. yep. uh, horrifying oh, yeah. to me. But, mm-hmm. but you know, yeah. there's a there's a purpose to it. There's got to be a lesson that we learn and we move on. Um, it, it does make it tough. 
I, the other thing that, that I, I found fascinating was, was your, your talking about the UFOs and how you can, how you can, how you can tell whether um, an experience is um, actual or not as far as the abductees go. Right. Yeah, a lot of it's programming. So, well, uh, depending on what they're seeing, you know, where I've been, it's easy to affect someone psychologically through a technological field of energy. In other words, if people are very psychic and they're very attuned to different multidimensional fields and they get interfaced with any type of technology or there's a, there's a technological feed that's, that's assessing their own personal antenna, they can literally create a, a psychotronic projection or a type of interface where they'll literally see something that's not necessarily a value. And so, for, and so far as it's not part of a real UFO, it's a program running from an artificial intelligence-based project. So, so that's where I can tell. And, and a lot of the times by the way um, someone who's a contactee or possible military abductee will describe what they're seeing or how they're feeling, I can usually pretty much tell if it's been more psychotronic or projection-oriented versus their state of consciousness. Um, not that I discount contact experiences, obviously I don't. I know that they're real. But I do know that so much of that right now is getting misrepresented and hijacked and that a lot of those natural psychics and these, these beings who are very advanced as contactees are getting manipulated by a technological field of energy that's surrounding and engulfing their aura and four-body system, and they're probably not even aware of it. So, so that's the part that's more about hardwiring a target of interest, which was what they use in terminology, into a technology that could skew their perception of reality to a point where they believe that they're seeing something when, in fact, it's not. It's a forced delusion, and it's worse uh-huh. than Project Bluebeam, but that's part of it. Well, that's what, you know, the, that's been my experience, especially with a lot of them where hypnosis has been used. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I, I would never say to somebody, I think you're lying, but I, but I do feel that sometimes people are reporting what they think they saw and it's not what actually happened. Correct. And, I agree. And it, 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 uh, it, it does, and, and it's the same with, UFOs, I mean, let's face it, there are UFOs out there, but UFO means unidentified flying object. It doesn't mean mm-hmm. alien spacecraft necessarily. Right. So, yeah. you know. And a lot, yeah, especially here, them. I mean, the, the sky. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but, but, yeah, it, it, it bothers me that, that, you know, everything is, is you know, aliens are going to come and get us, and that's, that's that's not the case. Um, no, they're not the enemy. I, I think, yeah, I think when Patrick, we we wrote something a long time ago, and it was basically, if their object was to wipe the planet clean to terraform for themselves, they would have done it millions of years ago. Right. So they would have winked it out really in a microsecond. Nothing. Yeah. I mean, and mm-hmm. and oh, I know the other thing that you you mentioned that was so cool. You said that the Earth was not a planet. Want to explain that? Right. Well, I know that everybody, and this is like changes everybody's paradigm in a really big way, but the whole idea behind what we see and what we've learned in school and in college and this and that, that it's, um, you know, this has never been a planet. They categorize it as a planet, but it's not. It's, it's more like a, I call it a celestial body to some degree, but, it, you know, I used to say it was a terraform rock, and I know that's not very kind, but the idea behind that is that it's everything about this place has been engineered and that it's not officially a planet like you would say in, in, um, in multiverses or solar systems. It's literally been here as a construct and, and literally um, manufactured to such a degree that it's been used for various, um, various things. And some of it's been technological, a lot of it's been uh, for teaching, and, and a lot of it's been for control manipulation. So there's been uh, multi-paradigms going on between what's been happening here and what this world has initially been used for in the past. But in my opinion, and after I started really diving into these, um, when I look at the like, more codes of information, that this world was never supposed to be here. It's in the wrong space-time configuration. It's not supposed to be here. It should have moved on, and, and uh, we should have ascended into a different paradigm a long time ago. And that's, I think, the reason that we're living in a looping program where it's, everything seems like it's constantly doing the same old thing over and over again, like a broken record in a carousel, is because we're not supposed to be here. And it has to come to an end. It has to come to an abrupt halt. And I think that will happen. So my, that's my point. Is, you know, people, people like to categorize and classify things as planets when they're not. And I wouldn't look at this place in any form of dimensional space as a planet. Well, I can I can see I can see your point, but I'm wondering if are, is is the energetic of the planet connected to the energetic of the people on the planet too, or are they two different energies? Well, that's well, that's interesting. Well, there's a symbiotic exchange of energy. There's no doubt about that. And there's also the idea behind it being holographic. So what people want to project into it can create and manifest on a reality level, but not necessarily connected to the full space-time configuration. So we're still dealing with people creating a reality in a hologram. 
uh, at the same time, yes, there's an exchange, there's a symbiotic connection, but a lot of what you're seeing here, and once again, this is my own, you know, you, you can take it however you want, uh, the trees, the elements, the um, things that people see that they love so much that find that they find themselves connected to in spirit are, are usually terraformed and brought here, like the trees and the water was not from here initially and, and such, and even the animal kingdom. So you're looking at things that have been brought here on that level. So our essence of origin, once again, is not from here. It has been, to me, it's just been like a little stasis program. It's been a little place, um, you know, like, like a little in the midst of everything that people have been monitored on, incarnated on, entered onto timelines, onto experience and exchange data, but was never supposed to be here this, this long. It was never supposed to stay this, this long for this uh, amount of time in the illusion of. So, sort of like a rest stop and we've rested too long? Well, to me, it almost seems like it was an entrapment program, too. It seemed like there was such a misuse of technology at some point that it, it literally created such an inversion that it became more of a trap and more of a more of a place where everything was inverted and going in reverse. That's the only way I can say it. It's, it's inverted to a point where it needed to be in the opposite. In other words, everything should have flipped and it didn't flip properly. I, I mean, I'm just looking at it in terms of energy and the way it's supposed to it's supposed to roll. <clears throat> Whatever last to be here. And if we were to go ahead. But but isn't the population, I mean, a group energy? And, you know, there are those that, that, that have a greater awareness than others. Um, and, and I'm not talking consciousness meaning intelligence. I'm talking it in a spiritual consciousness m- meaning. Mm-hmm. But, but isn't, it, isn't it sort of like we kind of are going to all go as one at some moment in time? Well, and it, I know people take... say that. Um, uh-huh. I don't see that at all. I don't. I, I see that we're a hive collective to some degree, that people can operate and interface with a hive collective. But at the same time, we, we're talking about the, the cosmic origins. We all come from the stars, yes, but some of us are from different star systems and different galaxies and different space-time configurations than others. So we go with our, in my opinion, groups. In other words, waves of others like us who resonate like we do or are part of that tribe. But I don't necessarily say everybody goes at the same time. I don't think that's happening at all. As a matter of fact, I think that if you're looking at the timeline here and you're seeing all the people departing here, whether it's through a virus or something else, that's been weaponized, you'll notice that they're departing uh, almost alone, but not necessarily alone, alone, but there's definitely a breakaway going on and people are moving on. And um, I think that they'll go yeah. exactly where they belong to that frequency, you know, connected to their, their star systems and their, their star essence of origin or celestial cosmic code. Well, for those who want to raise their vibrations, I mean, there are certainly, see, what, what I'm finding is that, that, you can give people the theory, but they have to find the tools inside of themselves to make it work. And mm-hmm. um, I think the only thing that, that I have that I have in, in working with other people is like you know I can I can suggest tools to you, but you have to learn to use them yourself in your own way because your purpose is different from mine and and what you're here for is different than what I'm here for. And it's, it's not, it's not a matter of one is, is more profound than the other. It's just different. And, Mm -hmm. you know, so many people just, you know, they take all these classes, get certificates, and then they have nothing but a piece of paper. They haven't learned anything. So how do you, how do you send people on this journey of, of learning how to take control of the power they have within I think it's self mastery is based on how you how you um, know how to meditate. First of all, knowing how to affect your own mind by your state of consciousness is a big deal. Some people, well, you probably know this, but they, they feed off of the teachers. In other words, they're getting a Kundalini hit or an energetic hit off their teachers, but they're not understanding how to harness that energy on their on their own. And part of that is yeah. through spiritual work, yes, but it's through toning. And in my in my progressions, it's always been about through unified heart heart chakra meditations and also initiations. You know, everything that it takes to put yourself in another space of consciousness, and that means doing whatever, whatever mantras, whatever you are in alignment with on, at the spiritual level, and also understanding who you are as a multidimensional being. Once you have a gnosis of self, you start raising your vibration, and you start letting go of this belief system. You start shedding the skin for those false belief systems. Uh-huh. And I think that's what it is, is the understanding of self. Asking for the higher self to descend into the body is a very good thing to do. Um, bringing in the oversoul and the superconscious and overseeing through full light harmonics. That's some, just an example, but you know, it's, it's more about just fake it till you make it kind of thing. It's not about faking anything, but it's about putting it out there and just reinforcing it with dedication that eventually that code breaks the old code and the new one comes in, and at least that's the way I see it. Yeah, I, I can certainly re- relate to that. I just, I just know that, <clears throat> you know, when somebody 
says to me, oh, I'm on a spiritual journey, and it's like, great. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> but I can't, you know, I, it's just a good thing. How? And, and you know, they kind of give me a blank look, and, and it's sort of like, okie doke. Um, embracing the, the changes that are ongoing within our bodies constantly as far as, as the intellect and the memories and the ancient memories and, and all of the wonderful, amazing things that come through time um, that, that you have access to. And everybody's different because everybody's experienced different stuff. Mm-hmm. But, um, oh, yeah. you know, I, I, it, it's, to me, it, it's like it, it's, an overwhelm, but it's an overwhelm, but it's an overwhelm. But a long time ago, there was a, there was a oh, gosh, what was it? It was a, um, it wasn't Star Trek. It was one of the Rod Serling ones, the, the, the man who, who the Twilight Zone? was, yeah, the Twilight Zone. Um, he, he, he had a wife who, who actually, you know, just, just verbally abused him terribly. And, and, you know, he hid by going to the library and, and something happened and the world was destroyed, except he was left alive at the library and he had books. Oh, right. Yeah. Up for, and, yeah. And then he broke his glasses. And, and to me, if he'd been spiritually attuned to everything, his eyes would have healed. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's so true. I can relate to that, though. I mean, there, there, mm-hmm. there is, everybody has that, that aspect in them. If, if, if time was not an issue, if I was all by myself, what would I do? And, and what right. magic would I create? And, uh, you know, unfortunately, anyway, there Mark were no said animals. that was time enough to la- time enough at last. Thank you, Mark. Mark Eddie, there. Hi, I'm Mark. He was mentioning that. Ah, <laughs> that was a great episode. I knew yeah. he would know. Uh, but yeah, but, I should have remembered it, it too, and I forgot. But you know, it, it's funny that that kind of world without animals would be horrible. So, um, oh, yeah. you know, with, with without a, a cat or a dog or something for company, I, I would go crazy. Probably, it would be just, you know. Um, there has to be something that you can love that can give you love back. And, right, and that's, that, that's course, that energetic, that's that consciousness. Yeah, I agree. And that's why making a world more sterile or doing what they're trying to do here, it just seems like there's a lot of morphing going on right now with what's happening on the timeline. So to watch that closely. But, yeah, you know, that's you know, also when, the idea behind don't waste any moments, you know. Oh, absolutely. But when I, when I pull off and I look, all I see is, is the planet full of fear. And yep. it just seems to me that that um, we have to get rid of that fear, and the only way Agreed. we do it is by taking control and 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 moving, yep. you know, into a more loving energetic and uh, and higher frequency. Because I think the the higher the frequency, the the more you are closer to the source of creation, the closer you are to pure love and light. Mm-hmm. And and no, I, agree. I just I think. What's happening here is just it's 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 making everybody kind of make a choice, and Correct. and you know and and what I'm seeing is you know so many people are just frozen in place. Yeah, they're like deer in the headlights. Yep. Um, <laughs> and, and you know I I I fear. That that when this is over, everybody's going to try to go back to the way it was, and and it's impossible. Mm-mm. You can't. No, we're it's not going to be able nothing. to. Uh uh-uh. uh. Not at all. Yeah, and what's really sad is if you look at the paradigm, or if you look at what's going on in the timeline here, it may, we not, maybe not we may not have a world to go back to. And in other words, the linear is breaking down to such a degree, and the three dimensional is breaking down to such a degree, and the constructs are breaking down. Even though it seems like there's more corporate and global control, it's all breaking down. It's like the pyramid. I've always said the base of the pyramid right now is getting crushed. And with that comes down the top. I mean, you can't have a pyramid without a base and foundation. So I'm seeing the base of the foundation being destroyed right now uh, on an energetic scale. And even in the eyes of America, it's going to be very sketchy, in my opinion. And I think people should be very aware. And they should not remain in fear. You've got to get out of fear. You've got to transmute that alchemically, put on your armor, and get out there and be the, you know, whether it's a warrior spirit or whatever you need to be. But we need to make sure, and you're right, those who are initiating the fear, the propaganda, the harassment, whatever it is, it's controlling everybody and manipulating people psychologically need to be stopped. So however that plays out will be done. Otherwise, you know, they're never going to get out of the well. So that's my two cents yeah. on that. 
Well, yeah, and and you know, you can get into that fear loop and and be be stuck in that loop forever. And the oh, reality sure. is, you know, we we as individuals have total control. Um mm-hmm. so uh, you know, it's 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 to me it's a very exciting time. Um you know, yeah, there are th- some things that, you know, I can't well, get into. Well, it's not before. Let's put it that way. Not since Nazi Germany. <laughs> yeah. Cheap, but you know what I'm saying. Seriously, this is um, yeah. for the United States to be going through this right now. I never thought I'd, I'd see this coming uh, insofar as what's happening. So, yeah. Well, when, they're, when, they start talking, when they start talking about these changes coming again back in the fall, I'm, I'm saying I don't think so. No, um, no, we're not going to let that happen. Mm-mm. No, and and I do not think this world will go on shutdown again ever like this. No, no. I think that if they keep um, pushing it, you know, the thing is we can be nice and compliant, but when people take advantage of that, you know, give them an inch, they take the world kind of thing, then they need to be backed up and things need to happen. So I think that you're going to see a little pushback on that level, and then, of course, other things will be happening down the timeline as well. So, yeah, we're in for some interesting times. Once again, it's change. And through change, there is always a rebirth and a, and a reconstruction on some level. Yeah, I think in, in one of my, um, I think it was maybe the March or April um, prediction, I, I, I said that, that we were going through a time in which the world as we knew it was in labor. And mm. labor is painful, but it is birthing a new philosophy, a new beginning, a new start, and we're birthing a new consciousness available to people. And um, this labor is probably going to take a couple of years. Mm-hmm. And, and during that, that labor, and during that labor, you know, something is something good is going to come out of it. So, so that you know, we're, we we are birthing a new philosophy, a new way of life, a new. Uh, a new way of looking at life, and and to me that's exciting. And I think what what makes me feel positive about a lot of this is that there are a lot of people that are taking another look at their lives and and making shifts and changes. They're not trying to keep it the same because because if you're not growing, there's no point to your being here. You know. That's right. And, and, yeah, you and, don't want to just you know, exist; I, you want to live. Yeah. I mean, I might have a different feel. I might have a different view of this if I was a multimillionaire. Because then, going back to the way things were, it probably wouldn't be too bad. But, but you know, where where I am um, myself right now, I'm 76, and yet I've never felt more excited about life ever. And and well, there's good. just so much. There's so much going on. There's so much exciting stuff out there. There's so much yet to do and yet to grow into and, and, and to share and to, you know, to help enlighten my own spirit and then hopefully enlightening, helping other people to find the light within themselves too. So, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's a cool time. Mm-hmm. But, but, you know, you see so much fear and, 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 you know, fear and then anger and, you know, that's, that just doesn't help anything. And, and I'm well, not you saying... You have to transmute it or move it. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm also a warrior spirit, so for me, you know, I'm used to fighting on battlefields, and that's that's just what I've been doing while I've been here for a while. I mean, I do the spiritual work, too, <laughs> but I'm kind of the one who holds the gates open for everybody to get the hell out, and then I keep them at bay for you. <laughs> that's what I describe it as. <laughs> Rightly appreciated. So, you're so there, welcome. There is, there, is, there is really so much going on that that, that is exciting, and there's there are so many... Um, discoveries that that have happened that have been kept bottled up that I think are going to be coming out of the woodwork so that I I really look at at the future as as an exciting one because um, we have been kept at a certain level of consciousness for a very long time and I really feel people are breaking out of that they're saying no more Mm -hmm. and and there's you know of course the country is going into great debt so somebody's going to have to mm-hmm. pay for it. So I hope I hope my son works real hard because I'm not paying anymore. So um, you know, uh, but mm. but it it's it is a time of discovering and discovering first and within ourselves, and then the things that have been 
put back and put down during World War II, my dad was in the FBI, and he saw um, out on Long Island, he went with a group that were seeing a demonstration of, of something that had just been patented and, and that the government had bought. And literally they had a brand new car there, and they filled the gas tank with water, and they took a little pill, and they put it in the gas tank, and the car ran like crazy. Nice. With no gas. <laughs> there and you go. My, my, my father, and World War II, you know, 1944, mm-hmm. 45 yeah. in there. And mm-hmm. and they they bought the patent. And wow. and so why are we using it? They have. Oh, are you kidding me? Do you think? Do you think you know the oil companies would allow something like that to come out? But but I, I think know, those geez. kind of things are. You know, you, you would put these big corporation out of business, and and Correct. people who. I, I, I mean, the oil can be used for, you know, um, heating homes, but not necessarily. I mean, look at Tesla. He wanted to give electricity away. And look what they did mm-hmm. to him. I mean, you know, and they are now beginning to use Tesla energy in, in a lot of places that, that were not using it before. Right. Well, it's been weaponized, too. Let's not forget that because some of, even the technology I've been interfaced with in the past has been part of Tesla's, you know, to some degree, even with psychotronic and artificial intelligence and you know, it's just amazing. Yeah. Well, d- no, now that's you're interesting. Talking arti- you're, you're talking artificial intelligence. Now, do you mean something mm-hmm. above and beyond computers? Well, it's about synthetic telepathy type projects. You know, back then, he, he was involved in a lot of things that were advanced when it comes down to the mind to mind communication system, you know, mental telepathy, I guess you could call it, but still was a synthetic version. And, and to my, in my opinion, more synthetic uh, telepathy based. So, yeah, we had all kinds of things that were going on back then. And even if you look back when you're talking about World War II and prior, you, know, you can talk about what's going on with the, with the SS and the Nazis and everything they were working on with technology and UFOs and uh, also the Brill Society, which I touch on a little bit. And the idea behind that yeah. is literally uh, being so wired and attuned naturally as a psychic and a natural telepath that you can interface with machines and to the other machines quite easily. And I believe that she was able to do that. I think that there were... Um, I think that that is our capability naturally, and that there is a, a lot of national security issues around that. You probably are aware of you're that. You're talking Maria Orsich? Right. And also, yeah, and, and okay. psychics in general, too, but yeah, I touched on her in my book, yeah. Because she, she was um, amazing. Yeah, well, that's the whole idea, yeah, I, that I, in that electricity, you know, that runs through the body, that's the real, it's just that power. Well, you know, we are we're electromagnetic machines is what we are. Mhm. That's right. So that so that in many ways we are a walking computer. And and, and think about um, how much we've been distracted over the years and and decades and decades of social engineering and programming that has diverted our attention onto other things when we should have been focused on something else that would accentuate that ability. Yeah, that is scary. Well, I think that we're coming to a time here where I, I would hope that somehow um, I don't think the government is going to put things out voluntarily, but I think they're going to start being um, brought out by by people that no longer want to keep quiet. Right. I mean, well, I the know disclosure that, is I know quite a bit. Yeah. I, listen, I know there's a cure for cancer. I know it's out there. Mm-hmm, sure. Oh, yeah. Um, we have everything. We have frequencies that can do everything. That's why I get so frustrated do. with and this whole weaponized virus thing and the way they've been handling it. Well, that was all done on purpose. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're culling the yep. population. I mean, Oh, sure. And, That's what I mean by, well, I'm calling it out, too, and, and we see what's happening here. So, you know, we're not going to do the, the SS march like they did back in the day. That's going to change. No. We're not going to go through that tide. We've, we've been there before, not necessarily physically, but... A lot of our ancestors were, and uh, no, none of that anymore. I, I would be willing to bet five dollars on the fact that this this virus, those who survive, um, are sterile. We'll find out in about a year's time. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a baby boom in nine months, but but um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, it's fun there 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 was, you know. You, well, that's true. Yeah. If you have somebody in your house, yeah, I suppose that would happen. 
order. But 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 I do believe that the virus the virus um, is, is sterilizing because it's hitting men more than women. Um, Interesting. So I I I truly believe that that it's sterilizing men or making. Well, it's also people, mutating quite a bit as well. Yeah. 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 Well, that's the whole idea. I think there there is a plan, and, and the thing is, they don't have permission to mess with star beings. And when I say that, this is why I talk about the alien intelligence because we are not from here. And we may appear like we are, and people pretend, and they have social security numbers, this and that. We're not from here. So what they're doing, if they're uh-huh. trying to do anything that's that's interfering with our evolution or what we're trying to do as multidimensional beings in any form, that's a universal violation. By universal law, that's a violation. There's accountability because they're creating an entanglement. And that entanglement is going to be their self-destruct sequence. I try to paint this out for people so they understand it's nothing personal. But I'm saying, man, you've got to be careful when you're working on that field of energy and just think that this is a little world here and that you have control over it and you can control and do whatever you want everybody here when there are different species here. We can't do that. That's not the way the universe rolls. And that's my biggest message. I think I put it in my book, Alien Intelligence, too. And when I do my presentation in San Francisco. So well, it's frustrating, I think what, what, you know. Oh, gosh, yeah. And, you, you know, you, you sit back and, and you take a look at, at – um, what has happened and with with almost every great invention that comes along the first thing they want to do is weaponize it and that's that's not what we're here for we're not here to develop um aspects of war and that's that's why in many ways it feels like this planet is quarantined until well, they, either yeah. you know it, it, and until we can get to a place where we are not so focused on war that it, it, it transcends love and right. we well, are this is a focused of on the war. war though. Right, but we, we are not. It's it's more about a global control agenda that's doing that. So when you look at it, yes, you're oh, right, yeah. they've been weaponizing everything right down to red right bands. So yeah. But that's not yeah. the way the universe works. And the only reason they weaponize is because they can't fight against they can't fight the species off planet without trying to come up with the ultimate weapon against them. They're 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 totally toast. If we were to engage with an off world intelligence they would lose immediately. It doesn't matter which species. They're gone. And it, it, yet the opposite yeah. intelligence is not trying to hurt them. It doesn't want to harm them or control them. They're trying to do the opposite. And this is where the conflict came in. It's been like this for a long time, and it's coming to an end, in my opinion. And those of us who are part of that alien intelligence understand that. But, you know, this game isn't going to go this way anymore. But every time you give them information, even what happened to me with covert warfare, I broke down the technology. I put it in either remote. I, you know, and all of a sudden, DARPA's doing the same thing. They're working with the same data stream of information that I broke down in 2004, and that's not a coincidence. It's a weaponization of the, ma- of the mind, the brain, telepathy, you name it. It's got to come to an end. So, yeah, don't and, sorry. Uh, I can go. <laughs> it, yeah. No, but I, I think that, that um, knowing about it is the first step in resisting against it. Right, and, and letting and, them know it's not okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what the and, universe and is trying to tell them, but they don't listen to the universe. So we're the voice of the, of the multiverse. We're the voice of creator source. We're co-creators here telling them. And they still don't listen, you know. What is it going to uh-huh. take for them to pay attention and listen? You know, do we have this big uh, asteroid come over and just slam into the world, I guess? I well, know. we've had um, yeah. four, possibly five um, incidences of mass destruction. Mm-hmm. And then we started all over again. And, right. you know, there was a time on this planet where um, there was a preponderance of love and compassion and sharing and, and you know, being a community. I mean, it, that time was there. We don't really remember. There was a time where we could communicate with animals far better than we do now. Um, mm mm-hmm. So there was that time of peace and, and you know, blissfulness and, and sharing, and, and, then, and then technology happened. And right. with, with technology came, you know, the, the, the struggle for power, and, and I'm bigger than you are, I have bigger guns than you do, yada, 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 and, and then we, we got to the place where we are right now. Mm-hmm. And, and it's still going and, on. Absolutely, and you know, it, and you, you, it, it's we're trying to prevent you know nuclear weapons being used, and, and I hope we do prevent it. But I think that this was this was not a very good 
weapon, this one that was just unleashed upon the world. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, everybody in the world was exposed to this, so it was a, it was a crappy weapon. You know? Well, it's also, in my opinion, a terrorist weapon. It's biowarfare terrorism. Bioterrorism, mm -hmm. in my opinion, and, you know, it's my firm, I'm a firm believer in that, and, uh, and that to me is a, a war crime, so there is accountability on that level. You know, that was the first strike against the United States. I mentioned it before in other shows, but to me, that was the first strike. That was a launch. That was a war. That was a launch, and whether it wasn't a nuclear missile, it was this, but it took America to its knees, literally. It took us down. Oh, yeah. And you don't but hear you know, anything being said. Go ahead. You have something like that, and before you release it, you, you, you should have, um, you know, uh, an antidote for it. They have one. And they guarantee you they do. Well, they, they must because, I, I mean, if, if that's the case, then, then, then that is an act of war. And I don't know how right. you punish a country but, um, and, and not with war. But you know, mm -hmm. maybe economically, ever you know, there's got to be a way to punish them for what they've done, if that indeed oh, is I what agree. they did. Well, it's my it's my personal assessment that they have done that, and in, in my opinion, you know, because of the briefings which are classified, when people see President Trump talking with these these people, these talking heads, he's not getting he's not getting information that's accurate to anybody. Basically, that's just a placebo to keep everybody kind of kind of stabilized, but it's really not working. But the classified information, what we don't hear about, is really what's going on behind the scenery. And in my, in my opinion, I think he needs to come out and say and declassify the classified and say this was a, this was an act of war. These are people, you know, these are the people accountable, and let's prosecute accordingly. And that's what I would do. And you know, obviously China's part of it, but not the whole part of it. And I think that there are some insiders over here that are extremely guilty of something that's incredibly terrorist oriented. So we have to look at Absolutely. that. I mean, that's the linear thing, right? But still. That's pretty ballsy, if you ask me, <laughs> to do what they just did. Well, <laughs> you know, it's you know, I I think in a way that that, that in in the case of of at least the United States, that these are the kind of times where um, the tenacity of the human spirit does show, and um, there have been uh, amazing acts of of kindness and heroism and you know, that, that we don't normally see every day that, that are ongoing um, as we mm -hmm. go through this whole process. Um, That's true. I know. I know. The good angel. Oh, yeah. And, you know, there are more of them than, than one would think. I, I know that uh, usually at 8 o'clock in the evening, um, the fire department, the police department, parade through certain parts of the town with their sirens and lights all blinking, letting, the, letting us all know that, you know, they're there. I didn't realize how, how deeply that would touch me when, when it went by mm -hmm. here oh, a, a week or so ago. It was like, you know, it was pitch black, dark out, and I heard the sirens, and I looked out the window, and I saw this, this parade, it, and they drove very slowly with all their sirens blaring, with all their lights on, and it was sort of like, you know, I'm not all alone here. I you know, may feel isolated, but I'm not. They're out there, and they're telling me they're there. And if I needed them, mm -hmm. they'd come. And, and you know, you see things like that. You see, um, gosh, people giving their campers to doctors so that they don't have to mingle with their family, you know, and stuff like that. I mean, there are so many wonderful stories that are going on here that show that the human spirit is really full of kindness and love. Um, mm -hmm. And then you then you look at the politics and you begin to wonder what planet they're from, and um, <laughs> the I, I think that, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think politics has gotten to a point where it's it's impossible to get rid of people who are not doing their job. Right, they've I mean, been there too long. They're, they're fixtures, you know. Yeah. I mean, and, and of course, in order for term, term limits to be imposed, they have to vote for it. And <laughs> they're not stupid, so so no. you know, the, they they our function, our government does not function for the people as it was supposed to. And I don't know how you change it, but but you know, it's it, it's it's very sad that that 
they they are playing one upmanship on each other. Both parties are responsible, and you know they you did it to us. We're going to do it to you, and and, and that's children right. on a playground. And, that's not grown-ups yep. trying to help a country to get out of whatever trouble we're in, which which bothers me greatly. Mm-hmm. So, oh yeah, everybody's along for the ride, but, and they're in the middle of a feud. I totally agree. Well, you know what you do? You make them obsolete. If if they can't play nice and they can't be functional and they're not here to support this country but to take it down to its knees, then they become non-essentials and they become eliminated. In my opinion, I think that we would, do better off, we would be better off without a government and that we would have to come up with a different type of a, a construct but something more universal. And, and, and when I think universal, I'm talking galactic and more advanced and consciousness. I don't think this paradigm is working, and I think that we're seeing the final, the final death throes, if I, you know, into that that we're changing the whole paradigm. It, neither, neither side is going to win this time. I think it's going to be a bath, and it can be dangerous, and people can lose their lives, and, and people are along for the ride, and this is global. So, you know, it's not going to be, oh, well, here's the master of AI showing up to take over the world. I don't think that's going to happen. And when they try, I think they're going no. to get taken down. So once again, no. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I, I think that it's, a, it's an amazing time of change. I'm glad I'm here. And um, it's, you know, you, you do the best you can to keep the vibration as high as you can. Um, I, I think mm-hmm. that, that that what I have been finding with, especially when, when, when I, you know, go into to write stuff for the website or stuff like that, that I'm getting a different flavor of energy that's coming through. So I know that there is new and different energy out there that is accessible to everyone, and it's a matter mm-hmm. of, like you said before, getting your personality out of the way, getting your ego out of the way, and letting the information flow through to you. And everybody's right. capable of this. This is this is nothing that is you know, um, the, the you know it, it's it's no. How do I put it? It's no level of ascension that that you know I'm at mm-hmm. that, that everybody can't get to. It's 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 just that I I happen to be where I am. But 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 it's it's it's. Yeah. It's there for everyone, and that's what really sometimes frustrates me, that, that you know, you don't have to be afraid and you don't have to um, let the fear rule you. You can rule the fear. You can, you know, kick it mm-hmm. out and get on with your life. And um, it does teach you that, you know, it, it, I think it's it's fascinating in that they have so isolated us that we can't get together and... and um, and use group energy, which I find right. fascinating, because group well, you energy can do it online, but it's way different. Yeah. Well, it it is, but but group energy, you know, when you get, um, you know, baseball stadiums full of people, or football oh, sure. stadiums, yep. or churches, or you know, any group energy is so powerful, and mm-hmm. they are preventing us from from Correct. gathering in groups to and to to. You know they're discouraging That's us. That's not an accident. You know, yeah. and you know that. Yeah. Oh God. And, and no. also um, no. six feet away. And I kept mentioning this. Also, the six feet triangulation method is not about being. Oh, well, someone's going to give me cooties. It's more about uh, remotely accessing a, a target of interest with technology, so you can do a bioelectric or bio, you know, bioelectrical scan on a target and an interface them or whatever you need to do measuring the electromagnetic field and such. So that to me is is a way to not scramble uh, frequency and signature. So I think that that's what they're able to do and what they might be interested in doing when they're remotely triangulating targets of interest for facial recognition and other, other tracking systems and other surveilling methods. Well, and yet, so I when, that when, I did, yeah, when, when I did the um, remote viewing, we had, we had almost 100 people from all around the world that were doing the meditation together, and mm-hmm. we had the group energy that way. So, great. so it is possible to... To pull the energy uh, together and and use that that group energy to to transcend and to travel and to you know do all sorts of cool stuff. Um, yep. So, but but I I did find it fascinating that they were they had us all sheltering alone and not getting together and they're keeping us apart. And right. I think I th- that to me is is one of the most fascinating things that. They're not allowing us to utilize group energy for anything. Well, I mean, for even, for pro- <laughs> even for protest. Um, right. I, I find it highly suspect know. myself. And, and, you know, I think that I was talking to a good friend of mine today, and he, he was right. He said no witnesses. 
I think we have to look at it on a more nefarious level. I know you may not want to go down that path, but I think that we should be aware that when you have no witnesses that a lot can happen, whether it's personal or non-personal. So I would look at it as what's the agenda really about, what's going to happen here, and be, be aware with situation awareness as well as being tuned in. But, yeah, we can do anything through consciousness. We don't need to be physically together. But what that does when you're physically touching somebody is you bring them back to center. Uh, and you probably know this from healing. Uh, you know, whenever people are way out there in consciousness, if you just touch someone's hand or if somebody's ready to transfer out and you're holding their space for them to transfer physically, it does make a difference and it changes their frequency. And I think that's a very sacred experience. And, and working with people and animals and hugging people is really big. They're wanting everybody to be so detached and so neutralized from each other that that is creating a disconnect. And even though there might be a hive collective, it's going to be a different formula. So I think this is a preparation for many things. And you have to be aware, in my opinion, I would be aware of, of what they're up to because I never trust, uh, I never trust agendas. And this is one. This is definitely one. So. Oh, gosh, yeah. And, and you know, it, it, to me, it, it's, uh, it's kind of like watching something unfold and not being a part of it. And, right. And well, I don't want to be in the window, it, you know, looking out the window, watching the world. <laughs> No. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, watching the scenery from, oh, you stay in here. No, I'm, I'm more action-oriented. I've got to be in the midst of it, see what's happening, and then watch it from a parallax view. Well, you know, you, 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 you give energy as best you can in the ways that you can. And mm-hmm. um, I'm not sure that, that the energy, that the, the, that the government as a whole will do anything with it. I'm more interested in, in, in you know, just – radiating energy out there so that anybody who needs it can touch into it. And right. um yeah. it, it it to me is more of a let's let's see if we can't build an energetic that that enables people to sort of get rid of all this programming and all this um this relying upon things that that really have no power. And and exactly. reaching in into ourself for the spirit energy and the connection that that energy has with the cosmos because that's where the real power is. Now, are we going to become, you know, um, an army of, of, of love? <laughs> Probably not. But, but for each person on the journey to recognize their connection to the cosmos and the, and, and the, and the, and the galaxy, um, takes them away from the fact that at this moment in time, someone is trying to control them and hold them back, and they won't allow it. And, right. and I can remember a time a long time ago when um, I was really sick and I really felt, you know, being pushed and manipulated. And, and I can remember standing and saying, you know, you're not going to do this to me. I, I refuse to allow this to happen. And, you know, mm-hmm. my choice, my life my journey and and it all went away but it nice. was it was and another time i was under attack and i can remember hearing you know you're going to die you're going to die you're going to die and and at that moment I, I can remember saying i'll take a good cold but i'm not going anywhere and oh. <laughs> and that's what happened I, I i i was really sick but um mm-hmm. i think the 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 strange thing about that one was I was I was down in Virginia and it was an attack and um, I was sick and, and and I came home and I went to my doctor and and said you know I said to him you know really congested need antihistamine need something and he said were you in a bar fight and I said no I no no <laughs> and, and he said seriously and I said I don't go to bars and 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 he he took me over to the mirror and he said then then what is this this handprint around your throat like you were being strangled and i wow said, i said man that does look like a bar fight doesn't it and he said yes it does and you're going to tell me this is some of your spiritual stuff i said yep and he said how strong a <laughs> and then he asked me do you want and i said strong as you got <laughs> oh wow that's wild that was That's that amazing. was I think yeah that that was that was i mean I had everything that I was taking lined up on the table in case I did die, they'd know what I took, you know, and uh-huh. then and then when i heard when I heard the voices and everything i you know telling me I was gonna die, I didn't know I got work to do, no, I'm not gonna die, yeah um exactly. but, but but 
you know, I'll have a good cold for you. And, and, and oh, my gosh, I was really, it was awful. It was, it was, mm-hmm. bad, but, but I, I survived it. And then I went back uh, a month later and finished out the thing that, the, the stuff that I had appointments for and stuff. And everybody said, okay. no, you're not going back there, are you? And I said, oh, if you think I'm going to let them chase me out of there, you're crazy. <laughs> oh, wow. So where was it where you were attacked? Was it a physical place or a spiritual location or? Um, it was. I was in. I was sure. I was in. Um, I was in Virginia, uh, near Virginia Beach, but not at Virginia Beach. I was doing. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I was doing uh, huge meditation, and and then I, I think they had about a hundred people signed up, and and then I was booked for at least three weeks straight for appointments for readings. Wow! And, nice. Um, I I wasn't gonna let them, whoever or whatever, I wasn't going to let them chase me out of Virginia. So, Well, it was probably um, spooks anyway. Well, whoever it was, they 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 sounded scary, but, um, mm-hmm. you know, I just, you know, no. <laughs> well, good for you, I would say, you know. But you're very good. I, I know you're very powerful. So, especially well, with being one spirit. Good. I, Kind of, kind of wish I had known how to, you know, share what they gave me with them. But you know, that didn't happen. But I put mirrors mm-hmm. up all over the place eventually, and it was like, you know, here, have it back. I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. But uh, no, that was. Uh, there have been a couple of times when when I've I've run up against some energies that seemed very tough and and not loving, and. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you just, you kind of say, I don't think so. Not this life. Exactly. I like what you said, my choice, my life, my journey. I think that's beautiful. That should be on your, on your, uh, if it isn't already, your website. No, I don't think it is. (laughs) Beautiful. It's so pretty. It really registers, you know, energetically. It's really nice. That should be the motto of everybody here right now. You know? Yeah. um, Actually, it's it's it is the same. You're right. I mean, your choice to be here on this planet for this life, and it's what you need for your journey. So yeah, it's mm-hmm. you're right. That was good. You should put it on your website. Please do. That's my two cents again. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good two cents. I think that good. you know it's funny. Every about every ten years. I find that I go through a, 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 a chrysalis time in which I change and my philosophy changes and my focus changes and the things that I do change. And, and you know, I think we're at one of those times now where, um, you know, I will move as soon as I sell my house whenever that happens. And, and mm-hmm. it does it does feel as though it's time for, New beginnings. I mean, I'm not going to stop doing radio shows and stuff, but but my focus is changing, and mm-hmm. and I think I think it's important for people to understand that it's okay to change your focus. You don't have to, you know, you you don't have to get a job and stay in that job for all of your life. It's okay if you change careers, if you change directions, if you change what draws you and what speaks to you and what calls you. Um, that's important because because you are growing, you're evolving, you're expanding, and and as that happens, um, you know you 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 should be able to flow in those directions that are calling to you, and and you know yes, you need to have a mundane job that feeds you and keeps a roof over your head, but you you also need to need to listen to those whispers of creativity that come to you all the time and mm-hmm. and not put them aside because that becomes the fuel for the spiritual journey. Very true. I mean, you you write, you speak, you do all sorts of wonderful stuff. That's how you fuel your 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 journey. Um, you know, artists paint and and writers write and you know, it is it, it's kind of like everybody has to find what their own fuel is. And and make sure that they're utilizing that energetic in their life to balance their life. Because without a balance, you're not going any place but in circles. Yep, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Some Love people that. get very dizzy. 
But oh, sure. I think, I oh, think, I think that's what's going so, on in the world. It's off balance. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And, and you know, you talk of the energy and, and of the fact that, that we're out of sync. And I, it, it, that makes perfect sense. Mhm. Yeah. The, the, Definitely the, not in harmony. And, without. No, no. And and I think that when you look at when you look at the energetic that that you know people are radiating these days, um, it's it's um, there's no harmony. There's no natural yeah. flow. There's you it's, know it's, it's fight or flight irrational. right now too. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it's it's either they're going to be scared and fear or they're going to be fighting. They're going to be, you know, activated, you know. So, yeah, definitely off. But it's not there. It's it's an environmental condition. It's atmospheric. It's not theirs to own. And once they realize uh that it's not theirs to own, then they can can move through it easier, in my opinion, anyway. But but for those who, you know, for those who choose to fight, how do they fight something like this? Well, you know, sword, the sword is mightier than the pen, or the pen is mightier than the sword. It depends on where you're at in the timeline. But I would say writing, channeling, doing whatever it is to move the energy and the anger and the rage or the emotional, you know, that you're feeling, that emotion needs to be moved, energetically speaking. You know, for me, it's writing and putting the truth out and getting on radio shows and training and then being in the midst of it if I have to be. But I think it's moving the energy and not being afraid to move that energy, not being afraid um, you know, rage is no good, but anger is okay. You know, that, to move the anger and move uh, the frustration and, and direct it accordingly is not a negative thing. And people do it through, uh, you know, even getting in political arenas if they want to. I think the biggest thing we can do is, is set the standard insofar as what will be tolerated and what will not, and making sure that we have our own boundaries on the timeline in the sense of not having people create our boundaries for us, but actually creating our own. And I think that that's the biggest deal. Because right now, people are creating the foundation for us. People are pushing us around, even if it may not seem like people are being pushed around. They are. They're being manipulated right oh, now. Yeah. That needs to be addressed. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, when I look at these little paper masks they want us to wear, oh. I keep, I keep, I keep trying to figure <laughs> I mean, I, I really don't know, know the purpose of them. I truly don't. No. And I don't, and I don't, I don't know. keep you like a slave and shut you down. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, it just it's it's sort of like, am I pro- am I protecting the public from me or me from the public? I just I don't know, and it doesn't make sense to me. No, it doesn't um, because you realize that it's not even transmitted that way, in my opinion. So I don't think people even yeah, need no. to wear masks, quite honestly. It's more about psychological control and imprinting, if you ask me. And that's why I say get a V for Vendetta mask if they want to play that card. And also, I know so many people who can't wear the masks, they actually get dizzy. One person had a car accident I saw an article on because they're passing out. I mean, it's really not healthy, quite honestly. It's better off that they don't wear one. But they're gonna, you're going to see them push this agenda, though. You're going to see it roll. And, and in my opinion, that's something that needs to be addressed as well. Well, I'm wondering if people feel safer. But, I mean, I mean, I understand if somebody's sick wearing a mask. That way they keep the germs to mm-hmm. themselves. That makes sense to right. me. But, but not um, I, I, I really, I feel like I'm smothering with something, you know, across my face like that. So, so Well, so I don't like it. And I think I told you this a long time ago about the experience I had back in the 80s where I was out of my body and I went into a room with machines and they had body bags. I don't know if I ever told you that, but, you know, I have stuff that's happened to me and it's not psychological, it's actual, like, real stuff. And... When I see what they do, sometimes it's just like it's not even a triggering. It's almost like an activation, like I remember that and I remember this. And I don't like where they're heading, okay? I don't like it. So I'll leave it at that. No, that's, yeah, I, I can understand that. It just, it confuses me, to tell you the truth. And the other thing that confuses well, it, me Yeah, is, because it's not rational. Because your consciousness is clear no. and you realize it's, it doesn't make any sense. They don't make any sense. That's the problem, that they're not acting properly. You're right. Well, and no, they have, your gnosis. They, they, they have 800 FEMA can, camps all over this country. Why didn't mm-hmm. they use the FEMA camps for the six people? Right. They're all staffed. Oh. They, they're all staffed and, and ready mm-hmm. to go. And, right. and they're in every state, and they, will, they can hold hundreds of thousands of people. And, you know, mm-hmm. we've had, since I found out about those FEMA camps, and, and it has, I found out, I mean, they've been there for a long time, 
but I found out about them about eight years ago. And, you know, mm. pe- people said, you know, they were for emergencies. Now, we've had massive emergencies, you know, at New Orleans and, and Katrina. We, we've had mm-hmm. massive emergencies where um, we needed facilities to house great numbers of people, and we haven't ever opened any of them. So what are they for? Exactly. Well, it's not, but I want to say psychological operations, and also the numbers were overestimated. In other words, they were inflated on purpose, which you have to look at. You have to look at why they did that and to create and, and more, incite more fear and, and propaganda. And once again, you know, I'm looking at it and analyzing this thing, and it's not looking real good on their end as far as what they've been up to. And we know we didn't. If you talk to most people, the hospitals are not oversaturated with people, you know, and, uh-huh. and the uh, ventilator system, from what I understand, they shouldn't be on ventilators because it's actually a, a kill shot. And once you put them on the ventilator, you're blowing up their lungs. And I agree with that. If you listen to Dr. Shiva, he was right on. I, I encourage people to listen to Dr. Shiva and follow uh, him because he has excellent data about his analysis and what's happening here and, and some of the psychological operations that are going. What it is is, you know, you have a weaponized virus, but they're, they're taking it and they're formulating an agenda behind it that is literally, it, it's literally taken, taken our world and changing it into something more, more about control and manipulation, if you ask me. This isn't about liberation or our constitution or freedom. This is, this is inverting, once again, information and, and taking it to a whole different area. So I think through that whole process of being corralled and controlled, we're going to, we're going to break free of it. But it, once again, it's a challenge. Well, I think, too, they've been, they've been putting, you know, any death in as a, as, as a virus death as opposed right. to, yep. you know. It, mm-hmm. so, so you're right. They are inflating them. And um, uh, I, I really, I'm watching it, and I'm thinking, you know, what, what are they up to? What is going to happen? I mean, they are going to have to open up the country again. But, but if right. you get right down to it, you know, the, 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 the numbers – are not all that much more than regular virus, you know, the no. flu. This is what I mean by there's going to be accountability for this because this, this is not an accident. This was done deliberately, like I said, and there needs to be accountability. This is a global war crime as far as I'm concerned, and it's gotten out of control. And whether it's a new world order move on the chessboard or whatever, it needs to be dealt with immediately and neutralized immediately. So that's I my, totally agree you know, with you. And I would imagine there are a lot of people out there that agree with you as well. It's just a matter. I hope how, so. How, <laughs> you know, how does that happen? You know, every now and then, I, I I see things that are just so out of the ordinary, and and how could they possibly be doing this? And and yet, um, there's there's no retribution. There's no fighting it. There's no um, right. You know, no everybody walks. Everybody walks clean, and yeah. and it's just it it's. I sit back and I think, you know, what is the world coming to? I mean, this is not what the founding fathers had in mind for sure, and and mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure whoever created us, this was not what they intended for us to do or become. Exactly, and that's the whole idea of the co-creation of what we are. That's why I say it's against universal law. It may sound kind of cheesy, but it's not. It's actually a big code. It's, it's, it's more than, you know, they want to talk religion and God's law and this law and man's law. Well, that has no, no value. What universal law does have value, and what they're doing right now is, is literally a criminal act beyond the word. So, I, I, like I said, there is accountability. What I'd like to see is more of people countering, and especially with the president, countering what they're doing and addressing what they've done and, and not glazing through it when he's doing these um, presentations or whatever you want to call them. You know, it's, every day they're out there giving a briefing, and it's, it's just nothing but... But, you know, placebos. So, yeah, we need to counter this immediately. And no longer you wait, the worse it gets. It's like anything else. You give them time, they're going to they're gonna do more damage. You know, it's like a slow kill, but it's a slow bleed, but they're still doing a lot of damage. The ship that literally has been damaged and we're leaking out and the water's coming in and, and it's like, man, you got to do something. So that's what I see. Well, I, I do feel that, that, you know, that a lot of, really individual good stuff is going to come out of this. Now, whether as a nation we come out of this stronger, I don't know. But I, I do know that individually people are finding strengths inside of themselves they didn't know they had. True. And, um, you know, a, a lot of people that I talk, talk to, um, you know, things have happened that, that they didn't expect would happen, and 
and they are finding greater strength within themselves than they knew they had. And and I think mm-hmm. that's a good thing because once you get to that point where you think that I, I can't possibly deal with this or I can't handle this, and then you find that, that you know, well, you have no choice. So you do. And right. um, I, I think that yeah. people, yeah, people are finding far greater strength inside of themselves than, than, than they ever knew they had. And that's a good mm-hmm. thing because that's something they will take away from this, knowing that no matter what they're confronted with, they have the strength to mm-hmm. survive it and and overcome it. Um, mm-hmm. I, I know that, that early on in my life, um, my mother kept having, you know, um, she she – she had a lot of problems, and, and she fell often, and she cut herself often, and, and I found that that I'm really the person you want to have with you in an emergency. I mean, I, I, I am really good in an emergency. Now, now after the emergency is over, I will take to my bed and pull the covers over my head for maybe a week, but, <laughs> but during the emergency... <laughs> I'm the one that, that that makes sense and makes people laugh. So, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's I know what I'm like when when I have to be in that situation. Right. Uh, but but not everybody has had that that kind of experience where where it it you know the the wheels hit the road type of stuff and you, and you either you, you you floundered or you you, you survived it. So that so that mm-hmm. I think that a lot of people are having that kind of experience now, and finding that that okay, you know, we can deal with this, we can do this, we can get through this, and mm-hmm. and they do. And sometimes it's because they have a family, and sometimes it's because they're alone, and they, you know, it's a choice. You know, am I going to go crazy or right. am I going to survive this and thumb my nose at whoever created it? And I think we get more powerful when that happens. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Sure will. Sure will alone will get people through a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So so maybe in in many ways this experience is making us stronger. Which I think so. It's either going to be pass or play. So I agree it will empower a lot of people and some people might might melt down because a lot of people want their safe space. They're not going to have the safe space anymore. You know, at some point uh-huh. they're going to have to come out of that home. They're going to come out of their rooms and they're going to have to deal with it. And, of course, that will empower them. But you're right, they're learning new skills. That's one thing I have noticed. A lot of people are learning new things, whether it's cooking or sewing or maybe maybe a skill that they didn't think they had. So that's something also. You know, taking time was, again, to process information and survive. And, and the real question now is, once this is over, do they take that knowledge and that power and move forward with it, or do they just kind of shove it in the closet and say, "Well, I won't have to do that anymore"? Because, because to me, mm-hmm. once you once you feel that power, that energy inside of you, then then among other things, your dreams become more vivid. You you have, um, you know, your spirit kind of starts to really kick up and and get more active. I have found during this time frame, I only need like three hours of sleep a night. There's mm-hmm. just so much yeah. going on that that I don't need to have eight hours, and and mm-hmm. you know, and there are, there are moments when eight hours are fun, but but you know, for the most part, you know, I I wake up and and you know, it's it's like oh, I I say to myself, geez, I need more sleep, but the reality is my eyes are wide open, even though my eyelids are down. And so it's like, well, I might as well get up and do something because I'm just going to lay mm-hmm. here otherwise. <laughs> That's but, what I do. Yeah. It it it's just you know it's it's kind of like, okay, so so my energy is saying this is a good time to work, and and actually, I happen to be a night person, so so mm-hmm. it's like you know, three in the morning, it's like, well, there's nobody I can call on the telephone. So I might as well do some writing or, you know, do something else to be productive. And, and it, it, mm-hmm. it, it's amazing. So, so some, this has energized me um, mm-hmm. tremendously. And e- even though I know it's a, it's a terrible time for so many people, but I guess in a way it's, I'm feeding off of the energy that's out there and, and it's, it's, it's incredibly energizing. 
And I would hope other people would feel the same thing because this is a I great time to, you know, it, it, it's such a fabulous time to work on your spiritual development. It really is on mm-hmm. on meditating or finding a way to meditate that 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 fuels you, that that fills you up and and makes you just want to you know get out there and and do bunches of cool stuff. And, mm-hmm. and yeah, channeling while, the energy, however you know, however it comes in. Oh, absolutely, and. And that's what we usually get in large groups of people. But personally, I'm finding at night the energy is more available than it is during the daytime. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Do you, Less activity, too, like, on a global scale. Everything's shutting down. Everybody's under a house arrest, so to speak, so there's less activity. It's more, more of a fine-tuning into other dimensions, if you ask me. Well, it, it is it is fascinating and it's so exciting. <laughs> I hate to say it, but it, it is exciting. No, if you're, and, if you're, that's, no, it's good if you're feeling that energetically. I think that's great. Well, you know, I, I, I want to get back to your book because I really recommend that people read it because it does give you a greater perspective of what it is your spirit is here for and and how to how to sort of embrace that journey as opposed to thinking that this physical journey is all there is because there's so much more. Right. Yeah, this is kind of boring for me. I mean, linear linear worlds are very dull, in my opinion. I like multidimensional fields. And, and once you realize your gift and your abilities, you just go in so many different realms and consciousness, and then you realize that the, the molecular structure can change, your DNA can change, and... And then all these worlds open up to you and there's communication with other beings if necessary or even even more divinity coming through your higher self over so I mean there's so much you can do. But it starts with the first step in going in that direction and, and most people haven't been taught how to do that, but usually there's a compass in there somewhere that will activate. Mhm. Well I think the spirit brings the road map and you have to trust the spirit to give you the guidelines. And yep. Absolutely. that's that's kind of um the, the the thing that, that that I struggled with for a long time because I always thought I knew better. And and the reality is that, that when I realized that my intelligence did not know better but my spirit did and was able to differentiate between the two because the ego gets in the way sometimes and that really can be a pain. Mm-hmm. But, but mm-hmm. once you once you're able to just sort of shove the ego aside, then all sorts of wonderful material comes through. Now, are you going to get rich on it? Probably not. But are you going to be a better person? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Oh, so, yeah. you know, it, it, it's, you know, are you going to be rich? Yeah, beyond words, but not necessarily with money. So, um, mm-hmm. rich it, it, it's sort of like the, the, the uh, Templar treasure was wisdom. It wasn't gold and silver. It may have been gold and silver, too, but, but it was wisdom more than anything else. So, um, mm-hmm. and I think that, that we're at a place in time where, where we can unlock those those parts of ourselves that 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 either they're behind doors we didn't know were there or doors we were afraid to open that we can unlock them and and sort of embrace the gifts that are inside and utilize them. And I'm not saying everybody's going to become a psychic because that's the last thing in the world that we should should do. Um, I mean, psychics are great, and and there are some that are very, very genuine people. But it's it's only a stepping stone on a journey. It's not the place where you should stop. So, right. Exactly. You know, being, Don't get preoccupied with it. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that that that, that I found in your book that I found fascinating. That that you seem to think the same thing because. Psych, you know, being psychic is something that everybody is. So you you want mm-hmm. to stretch beyond that, and and um, and be your own your own guide because you know someone can't tell you where you're supposed to go or what you're supposed to do, but but the spirit inside of you can. And I think that's that's one of the biggest parts of your book that you you're really telling people to rely on the, on themselves. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. Exactly. 
in times like these, it's a, a good book to read. You're right. I encourage people well, to take and, a look. It should be a, a book, and, and it's not a long book, so it's the kind of book that I would say one should read a number of times because th- there's so much information there mm-hmm. that, that, that yeah, you're going to want to. Yeah, uh, it's, it's mm-hmm. a profound amount of information, and, and it's the kind of thing you sit with for a while because, I mean, to read all the way through it, which is what I did, but I was I wanted to make sure I got through it so I could talk about it. But but I'm going to go back and I'm going to read different sections of it and kind of sit with that information and and see how it feels and applies to me and my journey and and you know take what works and and what doesn't work I will you know leave there mm-hmm. for a later date. But um, yep. I think it's 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 it you're you you point out not only you know how we are put together and and why and 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 the goal of the spirit within and and you, when you apply it to your own life and how you're experiencing different things and understanding what they what they mean to the evolution of the spirit that you carry i mean it's a whole there's a lot of material there that that needs to be thought over tremendously and 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 also how we have been mu- manipulated and programmed and pre-programmed, and and you know to find those aspects and and kind of break them up so that you have the freedom to to choose for this journey yourself, as opposed to what other people are saying you should do and be. Exactly. And that, yeah, self-awareness. That, that, yeah, and and to be able to recognize where the programming is. Mm-hmm. Whether so letting go of the program, yeah, 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 and 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 understanding that that once you let go of the program, there's so much more to embrace. Um, it, it, it's sort of like it's one of those times where you know it's a leap of faith, but but it's it's a safe leap of faith because spirit inside you would never let you do something that wasn't good for your own de- development. And in the end, it all works I out because we are connected to that cosmic cosmic compass. Well, the cool thing is, you know, once you get to that point, you can attach to other dimensions and other realities and other, uh, you know, and, and still be in this particular reality, but you you learn that there's so much more out there that mm-hmm. that, you know, you can have contact with and learn from and grow from so that, so that this is not the end-all, be-all. This is this is a place of a lot of stuff, but but there's so much more out there that is that is so profound that it's exciting. And you know, it's sort of like you know, we'll stamp my ticket for there next time because that looks like a lot of fun. But and I don't know if we can do that, but why not? I mean, if we try, I don't see why not. But I'll tell you, I'm not doing this anymore. This this ride is over. This uh, oppression <laughs> or anything with control and manipulation. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, no, it is. It's an experience, and you know, sometimes, mm-hmm. um, you know, they say that those who um, don't learn about history are, are doomed to repeat it. I think we're repeating history here, and I and I hope that this never happens again. Cause, I know. Um, I agree. It, it 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 has happened before, but in in different ways. But but the whole world has been affected by stuff like this before. Um, we're running mm-hmm. low on time here, so want to give out your radio shows and, and your website and stuff like that? Oh, sure. I want to thank you so much, Barbara. I just love talking to you. It's such a pleasure. You're so professional and enlightened. So thank you for having me on tonight, and a special thank you to Mark Eddy as well. And, yeah, my, my website's Night Shadow Anomaly Detectives. My books are available on Amazon.com. And I have Hyperspace at K2R Digital Radio Network, 12 midnight Eastern Time, 9 p.m. Pacific on Fridays. And Raven Star's Witching Hour on Saturdays over at Revolution Radio at 12 midnight Eastern Time, 9 p.m. Pacific. I also want to mention real quick, uh, at the UFO Con 2020 online, on Vimeo, it's on demand. You can actually watch my presentation on alien intelligence that I did in February 2020. You can watch it over there. I think it's like $22. You can watch everybody. But if anybody's interested in watching that presentation, it was pretty stellar. I covered artificial intelligence in the uh, alien intelligence book information. Very cool. And, and, you know, after you've read this book, 
the the other book you really should read is Transmutation Through Ascension. Um, mm-hmm. It really it, it it comes close to giving you almost a step by step, and and um, it's a fascinating book. And again, it's 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 not four or five hundred pages, so that it's it's a it's a wonderful roadmap of of expanding your consciousness and getting your spirit into another place and, and time and and flowing better. Um, I love it. I, I loved that book. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I mean so much to me. I've said it to you before. I, I appreciate it because I have a lot of respect for you, Barbara. So I appreciate your your um, insight on that book. That's one of my favorites too, but it's, it's really nice to hear you say that. No, it it um I have taught workshops from this book and and <laughs> I have assigned it to people. I just I think that it's one of the finest pieces of work out there. I loved this book, don't get me wrong, but but the other book um for me has been something that I can share with people that are just starting on their journey and they they understand you know the steps and they understand the process and it it helps it helps a lot of people get going on their journey that um they might not have had the the road map for because you do you mm-hmm. do give a wonderful amount of of um information in that book as well and mr sun and the, and the Halloween ball absolutely a great book so I do thank, thank you. you again you 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 are always 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 a special guest as far as i'm concerned because um i love talking to you and and um sharing stuff back and forth it it helps me grow as well as hopefully other people as well so well, um, thank you gonna, barbara likewise yeah it's always a pleasure well, you'll be I, on my I, show hyperspace soon too that's right i will and and it's already on my calendar so i'm looking forward to that as well so thank you for everybody out there, thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure to have Solaris here and, and share her wisdom with us. Um, it's, this will be up on YouTube tomorrow. If you missed parts of it or if you want to go back and review, which I highly recommend, um, I would do so. Um, it's, it's always an honor to have her here. She is a spectacular guest. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a great night. and. Stay well.